All right, this video is for all you slicers out there and all of you looking to pick up more club head speed. And you're really tired of conflicting advice that you hear on the Golf Channel and Golf Magazines and those types of things about how to release the golf club. I'm gonna show you exactly what a golf, a proper release looks like, what it's gonna do for your swing, and I'm gonna show you a couple examples of PGA Tour players who do it right, and then a couple who do it differently and show you what kind of difficulties they're gonna run into. So the first thing that you need to understand in the release is it's called a release for a reason. And think about what that means, that word release. Really what we're saying is to let go. And when you release something, it has the chance to accelerate freely, independent of the object that's propelling it, right? Simple understanding of that. In this case, when we're talking about the release, a lot of times what we're talking about is the release of the right hand, okay? And that's what a big part of what I'm gonna focus on here is because most golfers try to get the club head to move fast by moving their body very quickly and holding onto the club very tightly and they don't release it properly, they do what we call a body release. And so what that looks like is when you take your arms and kind of glue them to your rib cage here and turn your body through. And so what's gonna happen is your body and the club are going to move at a relatively constant pace together. You can see that the butt of the, or the uh, club head and my chest are moving together. And so the only way that this club head's gonna move very fast is for my body to move really fast. And of course, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and not only that, but your body just simply can't move that fast. So you really cap or put a limit on how fast you can move the golf club. By the same token, I can slow my body down and do what's a proper release, what we consider a proper release in RST. And that is rotation of that club and letting it release independent of the body. So what we mean by that, so earlier you saw my chest, my buttons on my shirt, and the club head moving together. Now watch the buttons on my shirt, and when I rotate my forearms over, notice that my buttons on my shirt are moving really slow, so this is very easy on my body, but the club head is moving very fast. One's really efficient, one's really inefficient. It's your call. You can put a ton of stress on your body, or you can take it easy on your body and let the club move fast and let it work as a tool the way it was designed to do it. And the way that it was designed to do it is to rotate. And this is a very important piece, and people ask me a lot of times how I came up with the name Rotary Swing and why I called it that. Uh, apart from the body rotating, the club is also rotating throughout the swing in a good golf swing. And what I mean by that is the club is designed to rotate around the shaft. Otherwise, they'd put the shaft in the middle, like a face balance putter where you see the putter shaft in the middle. That's designed for a more or less straight back and straight through put puttering stroke where you don't want the face rotating a lot. In a golf swing, they, I've never seen a single club with the shaft in the center of the face. It's around the heel. And when you put this club on an inclined axis or an inclined plane like you have here, guess what this toe wants to do as it works around the body? It wants to turn over. This is exactly how this club was designed to work. Now there's a lot of golf instructors out there that are teaching a body release, which is what I was showing you earlier. And they're taking the club face and they're holding it square throughout the swing and not allowing it to rotate. And they think that that's more consistent. It can be in certain ways in thinking about it, but again, it goes back to efficiency. You saw how slow the club was moving in relationship to my chest. My chest has to be moving really fast for that club to move really fast. And it's also going to predispose me to a typical ball flight. Most golfers who swing like this, unless they have a very, very strong grip and come away from the inside, will kind of predispose themselves to hitting a cut. Nothing wrong with that shot whatsoever. But in an ideal world, we want to be able to get a lot of speed with very uh, little uh, body effort. And in doing so, we also want to be able to hit the ball both directions. You want to be able to cut it when you want to. You want to be able to draw it when you want to. You want to be able to hit it straight. And so when you let the club release properly, that opens up all possibilities because you're now allowing the club to work the way it was designed to work. And you're able to get a proper release of the club face and allow it to shut through impact and not worry about you know, your body moving really fast and when you're trying to hit a draw, you're trying to manipulate this club face at the last second. All I'm doing is just altering how fast I'm gonna release the club face when I wanna hit a draw. So let's look a little bit more closely at the release of the club. So when I'm talking about that, there's a few ways that I typically have my students work on it in the lessons. And the first one is I wanna really focus on what this left hand is doing. And I'm showing you down the line view so you can see the toe as it releases here. I'm gonna pull it out away from me a little bit so you can see it. The club face is about towed up here at this point. When I'm doing that, and I can do it face on so you can see a little bit different angle, my left hand is allowed to release and turn over. 
This is covered in great detail in the five minutes to the perfect release video. You need to focus on that if you struggle with releasing the club properly and getting into a proper impact position. That video covers everything you need to do in a very progressive manner. So once you have that down, now what you want to do is you want to add the right hand to that. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier in releasing it. So now what I'm going to do is I want to speed this up. So now I'm going to use my right hand to get a little more zip out of it. And now you can see the club is speeding up a little bit more because I'm throwing it, hence the throw the ball drill video, with that right hand, and I'm releasing my right hand. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at VJ and Phil Mickelson and Freddie Couples and watch their trailing hand. What it does through the hitting area a lot of time is it actually comes off, Ernie Else even does this, to where the hand looks like this, the right hand or the trailing hand, is literally releasing the club. That's allowing it to speed up independent of you. So what I want you to focus on in this drill is I want you to think about releasing the club. I want you to take that term more literally with your trailing hand and think about allowing the club as if you were going to throw it with the right hand. Don't want you to throw it, but I want you to en envision that. And I'm going to show you a video of Tiger in a second where you can kind of really encapsulate and envision what he's really doing with the club when he's really releasing the club. Is He's almost, you can imagine letting go like you were going to throw the club. So what that's going to look like you can actually do that in the drills. We do that in the five minutes perfect release video. But I want you to just try and think about throwing the club at the ball, like the throw the ball drill, and allowing your hands to turn over. But we'll do this while keeping your hands on. So now I'm envisioning that I'm just throwing my hands, throwing the club and releasing it, covering the things that I've covered in those two videos I mentioned earlier. But I want to start getting to the point where I hold on to the club and keep this right shoulder back. As I release it, you can see my right hand is very soft on the club to the point where I could let go. Now all of a sudden what happens is the club can release and turn over properly very, very quickly. So if you struggle with slicing, a lot of times what golfers are doing when they slice is that they're trying to release the club with their body by turning their body through the hitting area instead of just letting go. Let the club go, let the club work the way it was designed to work and let the club release. So again, from down the line, I'm just thinking about throwing the club at the ball and as, if I exaggerate it, I actually can let go and you can see the club face turns over and releases and moves very quickly. And I just want to get to the point where I let go of the club and I'm throwing the club at the ball. And you can see I get a lot of speed with minimal effort. That's what I want you to focus on. If you're slicing, imagine that you're throwing the club, releasing the club head at the ball and letting it rotate through the hitting area and you'll stop slicing and you start to get the club to release and rotate properly through the hitting area. Now let's take a couple looks at, uh, at a couple tour play players and look at their swings, how they release the club. So in the video on the left, we've got a great angle, a very unique angle of Tiger. And what I want you to really focus on here is particularly his right hand, his right form. So as he comes into impact, imagine that he is releasing the club. It's almost like if you forgot that he had a golf club in his hand, which is great because you can't see the golf club, it's like he's throwing something down at the ground. And you can see that his right hand is going to turn over his left. And now his knuckles on his left hand are like pointing down at the ground. And his right hand is turning over the left. And you can see how, you, how he's got all this great extension as if you would throw an object. His arms and club have extended and formed a straight line with the right arm. And he's rotated the right arm over the left. That's got the club face releasing through the hitting area. If we look at VJ here, we can see where he takes it to the extreme and his right hand actually will come off the club right there. You can see how his right wrist is actually uh, in flexion there because he's actually released it to the extreme and now his club face is pointing down at the ground. Both of these club faces, it's hard to see here, Tiger's is blurred, but are pointing left or even down. Now to contrast that, take a look at this golfer. Well, this golfer is what we'd consider kind of a body spinner. He's taking his upper body, his shoulders, and trying to open them and fire them really hard at the target. And so he's releasing his body rather than releasing at the club. And then what we'll see in the next frame, rather than having this extension in the width that you see where Tiger's arms are out away from his body, the right arm's rotating over the left. When you look at this golfer in the next frame, notice that in about the same position, his club face is still wide open and his hands have already disappeared behind his hips. What's unique about this is that this golfer on the right is not hitting it nearly as far as the golfer on the left or nearly as well. 
and is working twice as hard to do it because he's not releasing the golf club. He's actually slowing the release of the club down, slowing the actual club head speed down by holding off the release and trying to turn the body through while expending ten times more effort to do so. So you don't want to have this feeling where you're holding the club face off and keeping the club face constant with your chest. You want to have this feeling of Tiger and VJ where they're rotating the club face, releasing it through the hitting area. If you struggle with slicing and you start working on getting this visual into your head where you're using that throw the ball drill and combine that with the five minutes of the perfect release and you will start to get tons more distance, great compression on the ball, and start getting the ball to turn right to left instead of, and get rid of that nasty old slice.